Let's start with a recap of Spirit Science Season 1. We began by first looking at thoughts and telepathy, chakras, as well as different types of energy. We looked at some strange phenomenon that suggested humanity is far older than the mainstream world believes, and opened up the conversation of sacred geometry. This led us through some talks about dimensions and the various wavelengths associated with the spectrum of reality, and how to navigate these realms through spiritual practices like meditation and astral projection. Then in episodes 11 and 12, we looked at how humanity is undergoing a form of evolution, going through a big change in how we exist fundamentally and are passing through a very important phase in the evolution of our species. The big idea was that 13,000 years ago, we fell in consciousness and became disconnected from our soul. And ever since then, humanity has been on a journey of remembering who it is and are today still coming to understand what it means to be a child of God and embody the light of something called Christ consciousness. And so now we begin a new chapter of spirit science with a story and a lesson from an unexpected place. To begin properly, we must pay a proper debt of gratitude to our friend Drimvalo Melchizedek. A great deal of the wisdom shared in season one of Spirit Science was all provided to the world by him in the ancient secret of the flower of life. We owe so much to Drimvalo and his work and these books that he's provided. And I just wanted to take a moment to express that for all of us. Now, here is an amazing story. Early on his spiritual journey, Drimvalo was visited by two angels. These glowing beings appeared to him and revealed that they were manifestations of his higher self and would be guiding him to different teachers and wisdom. And it was very important that he listened closely to all of the instructions that they gave. Over many years, they guided him and he met with over 70 different spiritual teachers. But on one particular occasion, they brought him somewhere that he wasn't expecting to go. They told him to go into a quiet room where he wouldn't be disturbed and enter into a meditation. Then they lifted his astral body from his material form and they headed into outer space and eventually passed a spherical membrane of energy that is about 440,000 miles away from the earth, which is a particular field relative to the life force of our planet in space. Once they passed this membrane, he saw something unbelievable, a huge motionless vehicle that was about 50 miles long. It could not be detected from earth due to the technology the beings on board were using. He said that it looked like a big black cigar, perfectly seamless, except that on one end, there was a huge opening pouring out with light. And as they got closer, he was sucked inside and found himself meeting these beings there, both male and female, who were much taller than he was. He learned that they were Syrians from the star Sirius, the closest star to our own, and that there were about 350 of them on the ship. And they all wore white clothing with little gold insignias on their left arms. He sat down with three of them who talked to him telepathically for a long time. And then they gave him a tour of the whole ship. Everything in the ship was white with no other colors. The rooms were seamless and all forms on the ship came out of the floors, walls, and ceilings naturally as if they were all very organic. He said some forms looked like beautiful futuristic art sculptures and it was like an art gallery everywhere he went. But what's more interesting, all of these shapes were the technology of the ship. The ship had no moving parts, you see, just these shapes emerging out of the walls and floors and ceilings. These beings were so advanced, they reduced their technology to shape, form, and proportion. And all they had to do was connect with the shapes in their hearts and minds. And through them, they could do anything. This form of technology today, we call psychotronics, but it's still considered in the mainstream to be a theory which has never been done, at least by us. Drimvalo said that he spent three days up in the spaceship. And when he finally returned, his angels began to tell him why they took him there. He at first responded enthusiastically, wow, their technology is so cool, and resounded how great it was. But the angel stopped him. No, you don't understand. That's not the understanding we want you to have. And he asked, what do you mean? So the angels told him this. Suppose your body gets cold in this room and you decide that you're going to go out and make something to heat the room. So you invent a heater and some kind of energy source, whatever you need to heat the room. Then you put the heater in the room and the heater heats the room and then you yourself get warm. That seems logical, right? Alas, what the angels revealed 
was that to do this actually makes us spiritually weaker. Why? Because in doing so, we forget our connection to God. You could have heated the room or your body by your own inner essence, but instead you gave your power away to an object. The angels projected to Drumvalo that as any civilization makes more and more advanced technology, if that's the choice they make, they separate themselves out further and further from the source of life and actually become weaker spiritually because they become addicted to their technology. They need it in order to survive. In other words, the Syrians were actually spiritually weak and Drumvalo was instructed not to look at them as a super advanced race, but as people who need spiritual help. The bottom line from his experience, he said, was that the angels wanted him to focus less on technology and concentrate on pure consciousness as a way to remember God. After this, the angels disappeared back into the higher dimensions of his own body of consciousness. He then got up and left his room. While he knew he was up in space for three days, he also rationalized that perhaps in worldly time, he was probably gone only a few hours. But when he saw his family and friends, they were completely pale. He asked, what's wrong? And they said, you've been sitting in meditation for three days. We were about to call the hospital. Now this lesson from the angels is something that we can corroborate with a lot of human wisdom. And one of the best places for stories that are deeply relevant here come from Master Paramahansa Yogananda in his book, Autobiography of a Yogi. For instance, at one point, he describes meeting a yogi who is able to levitate his body through deep meditative states. There are masters described who are able to teleport as well as appear to their students in different cities at the same time through their mastery over their energetic field and their body of consciousness. But Yogananda is very clear to state that it's not about the miracles, but the connection with God, which is reaffirmed over and over throughout this beautiful book. In a very funny story, when he was young, Yogananda met and challenged a yogi he called the perfume saint, who through many years of intense devotional meditation manifested the ability to generate any scent with his hands. Harnessing God to make odors? What of it? God makes perfume anyway. Yes, but he fashions frail bottles of petals for fresh use and discard. Can you materialize flowers? Well, yes, but usually I produce perfumes, little friend. Then scent factories will go out of business. I will permit them to keep their trade. My own purpose is to demonstrate the power of God. Sir, is it necessary to prove God? Isn't he performing miracles in everything, everywhere? Yes, but we too should manifest some of his infinite creative variety. In the end, the perfume saint manifested a most beautiful smell of rose on Yogananda's hand and changed an odorless flower nearby into smelling rich with jasmine. And many years later, Yogananda discovered how this work was done. He said that the different sensory stimuli to which a person reacts, touch, sight, smell, sound, and taste are produced by vibratory variations in electrons and protons. The vibrations in turn are regulated by prana or life force energy which on a scientific level are known as lifetrons, subtle life forces or finer than atomic energies, intelligently charged with five distinctive sensory idea substances. This perfume saint named Ganta Baba attuned himself with the pranic force of yogic practices and was able to guide the lifetrons to rearrange their vibratory structure and to objectify the desired result. His perfume and other miracles were actual materializations of mundane vibrations and were not inner sensations hypnotically produced. Now, Autobiography of a Yogi is filled with stories like this, demonstrating the power of God within reality, even greater than anything technology can achieve. And I wanna share more of these stories, but for today's episode, I think in addition to these two stories that we've shared so far, we would be remiss if we didn't actually look at Yeshua here, who is commonly known today as Jesus Christ. If we take the gospel accounts as, well, gospel, at least to some degree, we might infer that Yeshua also demonstrated with almighty grace, the same lessons the angels gave to Drumvalo. He showed that through God, one could do anything. Now, some people watching might be thinking, but Jesus was the son of God. We're not like him, except that even he himself said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do. Yeshua knew the latent power of the human soul and what was possible when our ego and lower self is fully integrated with our higher self and God. But it was just a matter of time, about 2000 years, for us to really figure all this out. 
But just figuring it out and understanding it intellectually doesn't necessarily mean that we're ready for it yet. And if we become so attached to our technology and ignore the call of the soul completely, then these stories will remain just that, stories. It's only when one becomes fully integrated through mind, body, and soul that the true nature of Christ consciousness is revealed within, which comes with a very cosmic understanding. Are you ready to go deeper? We'll see you in the next episode.